Yo, what's going on guys? This is going to be a uncut, unedited video on uh, basically just a tip for texturing for you texture modders out there. And it's going to be a uh, basically how to use the stencil plugin on Blender since not a lot of people know how. First, you're going to get your attire model that has your attire object you're trying to edit. And then you're going to get your texture that you're trying to edit. In this case, I'm going to be using just a black texture. I'm just going to blacken this out completely real quick just to give you guys a good idea of what to do. Get rid of that. And you're going to want to make sure your texture is saved as a PNG. Make sure your texture is saved. As a PNG, otherwise it will not work. So once you get your PNG texture, go ahead and go grab your logos that you want to add onto your texture from Google wherever you want to. And if you need to erase the background, go ahead and do that with whatever program you're using. I'm using Paint.net, which is a free program to do this stuff with. So. Go ahead and erase the selection, file, save as. Always make sure it's a PNG. Even the logos that you're using, make sure you save them as a PNG or it will not work. It can't be JPEG, has to be PNG. Go ahead and throw that away. Put this in. Go ahead and select the parts you don't need. Edit, erase selection. And you want to be left with something like this. The black on the outsides like this, if your texture is black, should not matter. But say you uh, are trying to put it on a different colored shirt, I'll show you a better option for this. I use a website called remove.bg. And what you want to do with that is go ahead and throw your texture in there. Let it do the work for you, and it should remove most of it. That does not look like it got most of it, though. Let me see. Mm -mm. It does look like it got most of it. Yeah, that is good enough. Okay. So we're going to take this. And these three textures, now we're going to load up Blender. We're going to first import our entire MDL that has the item you want to texture edit, which in this case, it would be the shirt for me. Then first thing we're going to do is not select the shirt. We're going to go to texture paint. And then after you go to texture paint, you're going to go to texture Right here, texture properties. Make sure it's on brush, select a new image, go to open. And here you're gonna wanna select one of your logos, not the uh, texture of your shirt quite yet, or your tights, whatever you're texture editing. You're gonna wanna open one of your logos that you're using, which in ca this case it would be one of these ones. And after you're done with that, you're going to wanna go to right here, this button right here and then go down to where it says texture open that up and change tilted to stencil and then when you go here you'll notice that your logo is now on screen you can hold shift and go left and right with your right click also clicked to uh make it smaller or bigger and you can use hold control right click to rotate it so in this case we're just going to make it small and then once we're at this stage, you're going to want to go back to object mode. Go back to object mode. Select your shirt. Go to material properties. New. Go to basic color. Image texture. And open your texture you're trying to edit. And make sure it's the PNG. So in this case, it would be right here. Then if you want to see it, you can go to texture. And now. Once you go to texture, you can go back to texture paint and you'll be able to see exactly what you're doing right here. In this case, we're going to put this on the back. I'll 
let's make it a little bigger line it up wherever we want it that looks about right maybe rotate it a little and you just wouldn't want to draw it on and if you're really trying to make it look good in uh, Photoshop or paint net whatever you're using you can do a better job at removing the white from around the logo. I didn't really want to do that and take the time for this tutorial video just because this isn't a uh, Photoshop tutorial, but try to get your logos with none of that white around so it'll look as clean as possible. And then once you're done with uh, one of your logos and you want to switch to your other logo, you'll just go right back down to texture properties, remove that logo, and load up your second logo. That's the same one. And it'll come up. And it's the same thing. Hold shift. Make it bigger, smaller. Control, rotate. So we're going to go ahead and make this a lot smaller. Line it up how we want to. Maybe make it a little bigger. Line it up how I want to. I'm not going to take too much time on this just because it's a tutorial. Go ahead and paint it on there. And object paint, you'll see that your textures are now on your shirt. And you're going to want to go to UV editing at the top, the UV editing tab. You'll see your image with your textures on there. You're going to want to go to image, save as. And then whatever you want to save it as. In this case, we're just going to do the PNG. Save it. Then you can close out Blender. And you'll see that your textures are now saved. Uh, like I said, if you want to make that little whiteness go away, you would just edit your logo a bit better than I did in Paint.net. Get rid of the white surrounding parts. And for the normal map, you're going to want to go to... Photo Pia, my bad. I'm a terrible typer. Let's let that be known right now. And then you're going to drag your photo into Photo Pia. Go to Filter, 3D, Normal Map. And what I've learned from the normal maps on Photo Pia, you're always going to want to hit Invert. You see how it's popping up now? The textures are now popping up. They always start caving in on the normal map on Photopea, so you're always going to want to hit invert. These aren't the best normal maps, but for a uh, free program, and if you don't want to use Photoshop, it works just fine. Export it now as a... You can export it as a TIFF if you want to run it through Compressinator after this, but for that, I'm not, I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm just going to export it as a DDS, save it, and then you're going to want to bring that normal map out. And if you don't hold up, uh, rename this to the norm. There we go. And if you want to, uh, to make this a DDS, you also run this. The same way I just ran that through Photopea, run this through Photopea and just export as DDS. But I'm not going to do that because I use PaintNet. So I'm going to save these as DDS and PaintNet, which is a lot easier. It's a free program. If you want to get PaintNet, it's uh, very easy to use. It'll give you this and let you choose which uh, compression you want to save as. You're always going to want to do DXT1. And if you have Hex Editor, you can make sure your textures are DXT1 by opening it in here. That is not the correct one. It is right here. And opening it in Hex Editor. And you'll see that it is DXT1 and DDS. Okay. So now that we have your tops color DDS and your normal, make sure this is DXT1. It is. I'm going to run it through Paint.net again just to make sure it's the same exact DXT1 as my regular model. So now let's see that's the same. Take these, put them into your texture folder. Let me just uh, save these somewhere. I'll just put them in there for now. 
then you're going to want to throw your textures in and throw your let me get to the game real quick throw your wrong spot uh steam apps common throw them in your mods folder and you're gonna want to bake that let me know if you guys like the idea of this uncut unedited commentary tutorial because i could edit it and take time for the next one if uh you guys want it to be edited but a lot of people asked for tutorials that weren't edited in the videos that i was watching because they're easier to follow along with so let me know if you prefer edited tutorial yeah let me know if you prefer edited tutorials or if you prefer uh tutorials like this because i can do them either way doesn't matter to me now let's load it up and see if it works in game which it will Load up. Don't try this at yes, all. Alright. Don't mind my screens. I have uh, menu mods for SmackDown versus Raw. Let's go ahead and load it up in game. Check out what it looks like. Hold up. Do not hold up. Hold up, guys. You guys are gonna hate me for this. I do not want the music to play on the entrance. So that's that's on me. This video is gonna be a little bit longer than anticipated, but I have to. Where is it? Audio creator safe mode. Here we go. Okay. Got to do that just so I can make sure this tutorial does not get taken down, guys. I did not record this for no reason. Forgive me. I wasted about a minute of your lives. Now, when it loads up in game. It should show like that. The following contest is scheduled for now, my normal maps are not the best, so the, uh, the shading and texturing Orlando does not look the best, but you can always run them through Compressinator to fix that issue. Randy Orton here tonight. So your typical Randy Orton performance is what you're saying. Let's go ahead and let it show the back as well. There you can see that you have your new textured item in game working. All right, guys, that's about it. If you guys want to see a tutorial on how to run the textures and fix them through Compressinator, I'm sure I can make a video of that as well. Just let me know if you want it. All right, guys, I'll see you for the next tutorial.